the public broadcasting is not subject as much, at least, to business and to corporate and advertiser pressures. However, of course, it's subject to state pressures. Uh, and uh, uh, how free and independent public broadcasting is depends typically on how free the state is. Not like in a free society, public broadcasting will be free. For many years, the BBC was very independent. Uh, with Ch Thatcher, uh, another uh, anti-democratic reactionary, uh, the BBC has been become much more constrained because uh, the British government is also imposing harsh constraints on freedom of expression under Thatcher, another mislabeled conservative. Uh, but uh, turning to the United States, public broadcasting is very weak as compared with virtually any other country, any other democratic country. You know, any of the, you look at the industrial democratic societies, they all have public broadcasting. Some of them have only public broadcasting. For example, in Israel, there's only a state TV. In England, until recently, there was only state TV, and now there's another channel, uh, two other channels. I think in Canada, if I, till recently, there was only CBC. There may be another one now, I've forgotten. Uh, but it's common. I mean, those are major channels, and that's true of most countries. And uh, how free they are depends on how free the country is. In the United States, they're very weak because here things are run by corporations. This is a business-run society, uh, and things are supposed to be under corporate control. So public broadcasting is very w limited, and in fact, it survives to a large extent on corporate donations, which is a constraint. Uh, Gulf and Western, in one famous case, forced WNET-TV in New York to cancel a program on hunger uh, simply by saying they'd remove their subvention and they had to submit. Uh, uh, and public broadcasting is, is uh, you know, it varies across the country. In the major centers like Boston and Washington and New York, it's very, very narrow. It's, in fact, it's, I think it's more tightly censored than corporate radio and television. Uh, in other parts of the country, like, you know, Laramie, Wyoming, and Des Moines, Iowa, and maybe here, uh, it's more free. Uh, and that makes sense. The same is true of the commercial media. Uh, because in the ideological centers, it's much more important to control what people think. What they think out in the sticks doesn't matter so much because there isn't much they can do about it. Uh, and as a result, uh, it's more open. I mean, I can see that myself. If I go to Laramie, I get interviewed on public television, on public television, but that's inconceiv virtually inconceivable in Boston. Uh, you know, maybe a minute now and then or something in the interests of, you know, fairness or something. But, uh, and, big, and the reason is that, you know, b b b uh, the main centers like, say, Boston are subject to what's called a liberal bias, meaning tightly controlled by ideological managers who know their business and don't let things get out of hand. Uh, I think it's possible to put the kind of pressures on public broadcasting that can't be done on corporate media, but to that, that requires organization and real participation. There are other forms, I should say. Uh, one of the most, some of the most interesting and important things are listener-supported radio. Now, that's usually a small-scale operation, you know, fly-by-night operation, but they're very important. Now, that's really out of corporate control or state control. And you can tell, you travel around, as I do, to communities, uh, and the ones that have listener-supported radio are quite different. There's just an independent culture that can sustain itself there with people participating and, you know, involvement of the community. I mean, it's just much more democratic, uh, and you can see the results. But that's, you know, very limited resources, because resources lie essentially in the business community. <laughs>